Welcome to the 10 day trend. Wind direction will be key, as is often the case. We start with an easterly switching to a northerly for a time next week, and then a bit of a scrap going on as we go through next week. More on that in a moment. There's not too much fighting going on currently. The wind's high up in the atmosphere, meaning the weather patterns are fairly slow moving. This is the jet stream. It's a bit fragmented, a little bit bitty, but if you squint a little bit, you might just be able to make out the Greek letter omega. This wiggling pattern of the jet stream like that, capital letter omega. This is a classic omega block. Well, I say classic, it was probably firmer a couple of days ago, but this is the situation we're in at the moment. This omega block, which means high pressure sitting in here, doesn't shift very far. It is, though, starting to change. It is looking more fragmented already and will continue to break up over the next few days. We get an arm of the jet stream coming in from the east across the UK, and then it all gets very messy through the weekend until, as we head towards Sunday and Monday, a more typical picture emerges with a jet stream, albeit a pretty weak jet stream, coming off the Atlantic in, in a more typical position. What does that mean for our weather? Well, it means gradual changes over the next couple of days. If we rewind and come back to the blocked situation at the moment with this area of high pressure that's been sitting over Scandinavia, it's just gradually ambling its way a little bit further westwards. And around high pressure, the winds go clockwise. So we've been drawing in this easterly breeze from the North Sea, which you will almost certainly have noticed if you live in eastern parts of England, particularly on the coast. Bringing a fresher feel here again on Thursday, and again it'll be western areas that see the top temperatures, 15, 16, uh, maybe a touch above average, and again western Scotland, like it has done for the past few days, likely to see the highest temperatures on Thursday. The east coast will struggle to get into the teens, feeling cooler with that wind once more, despite quite a lot of sunshine. And most of us will have a fine sunny day on Thursday until we start to see a weather system coming in across East Anglia and the southeast later on. And look at this spiralling in, bands of cloud and showery rain. Unusual to see weather systems coming in from this direction. And that's uh, the sign of a big change for Friday, certainly for England and Wales. Scotland and Northern Ireland, generally another sunny one on Friday, still with a, a cool feel on the east coast. And again, Western Scotland, probably top of the temperature tree. But for England and Wales, much more cloud and some outbreaks of rain. Now, across much of the Midlands, southern England, south Wales, there'll be showers. Some heavy showers are possible. The biggest question mark for Friday and Saturday is where this line of persistent rain is going to be. Notice it is a line. It's a weather front. And it is by this stage in line with those winds. So it's what we call aligned with the flow. So it doesn't move very far very quickly. So you could get stuck under it for 24 hours or so. It is likely to slowly shift further northwards, spreading that rain into parts of Scotland, maybe Northern Ireland on Saturday. But there is some question marks about the exact positioning of this weather front. And of course, just a, you know, 50 miles or so difference of position of that weather front will have a, a big impact on the day. If you're stuck under that rain all day, it'll feel pretty grim. Whereas if it's a little to the south of you or to the north of you, you may be fine, dry and bright. So uh, a bit of a question mark about that. That's the biggest uncertainty in the medium range forecast for Friday and Saturday. And the computer models aren't really agreeing. There's a bit more agreement now than there was a day or so ago. But the these are the rainfall accumulations from the three most looked at computer models that we use here at the Met Office. This is our computer uh, uh, model, the Met Office one. This is the European one and this is the American one, GFS. And this is a chart showing the rainfall accumulations over two days, uh, Friday and Saturday, and dictating or depicting where that weather front is most likely to lie. And you can see there's some similarity. It looks pretty wet across parts of northern England, but the European model has the weather front pushing into southern Scotland, and the American model also has some uh, heavier rain across the southeast, perhaps indicating some heavier showers here. They all do agree that western Scotland, the western Isles in particular, stays fine and dry through Saturday and should hang on to some sunshine. But just showing you this to show you that a bit of uncertainty about the exact position of those weather fronts. So if you've got plans for Saturday, please do keep up to date with the weather forecast.
that weather front should be edging away during Saturday evening, kind of fizzling out. And we've got this kind of flabby low pressure system. We call them flabby lows when there's not a lot of isobars uh, close to them. So uh, the winds will be fairly light, but it is a low pressure system. So it is likely to generate some showers during Saturday. And what happens then during Saturday evening and into Sunday is that low becomes a little less flabby uh, and starts to amble away. And as it does so, it allows the winds to switch direction. So we're no longer looking at easterly winds, but around low pressure systems, the winds go anti-clockwise. So as the low moves this way, it's gonna generate something of a, a northerly wind. The wind's coming down from the north, bringing, as you might imagine, a colder feel across much of the UK. But notice down to the southwest, well, the winds are going in almost the opposite direction, southwesterly winds here. So we've got a bit of a scrap going on. Now, it looks like that northerly wind will generally win out through the first part of next week. And as you can see, much colder air in place, certainly across Scotland, Northern England and Northern Ireland. Whereas further south, certainly on Monday, the milder air will push in, it looks like, for a time as these weather fronts bring some cloud and outbreaks of rain. Now, northerly winds in April, nothing too unusual about that, but it, it will bring quite a shock, particularly in Western Scotland, where it has been so very mild. These northerly winds are likely to bring some wintry showers, snow showers certainly over hills, but even at low levels, there could be some, and of course, there will be something of an ice risk with frost also as we go through Sunday night and into Monday. I say nothing too unusual about that at this time of year, but it will be a bit of a shock to the system after 21 degrees earlier this week in Western Scotland in particular. So yes, it will turn colder across certainly the north and perhaps even further south as we head through the uh, early part of next week. Switch to the European model, but again, showing the temperature profiles and that cooler air in across much of the UK for Monday. If anything, the colder air may spread a little further south by Tuesday, but then look what happens. As we go through day by day, uh, the European model suggesting that the milder air will eventually win out. I'll just go through that sequence once more. Let's go back to Monday with that colder air pushing southwards. Still quite mild in the southwest, but the colder air likely to push a little further south by Tuesday. However, then the milder air starts to win back out as you go through Wednesday and Thursday. Now, this is what we call the deterministic uh, model run from the European model, ECMWF. And the deterministic is like the main computer model run, if you just want to look at one and get an idea. But of course, that's not always that useful when we're looking at this kind of range of forecasts. It's much better to run the computer models many, many times and generate what's called an ensemble forecast. And from that, you can generate a more probabilistic or chance of uh, uh, interpretation of the forecast. And here now I've got plotted the box and whiskers uh, forecast from those ensembles of the temperatures to show you the difference as we go through the next few days. So this is the temperature. The red box and whiskers are the maximum temperatures. The blues are the minimum. This again uh, from the European model for Dundee and it shows that dip. So this red line is the average. You can see that distinct dip as we go through after a mild few days distinct dip through next week. Most of next week in Dundee expected to be below the average until we get to Friday when there's a big jump in the uncertainty. The larger the, the blob, the larger the box and whiskers, the greater the uncertainty, the bigger the spread, the, the more computer models aren't agreeing. So that Uncertainty jumps there as we head towards Friday about whether temperatures will start to rise in Dundee or not. And compare that with Bristol and the box and whiskers plots showing, yes, there is a bit of a dip, but here, although it is likely to turn a little cooler, uh, it's not as pronounced. Not all of the uh, model runs are below the average even. So yes, it's likely to dip, but then a much stronger signal that earlier in the week temperatures will recover uh, across Bristol in the southwest of England. So that's that contrast with that milder air likely to push in at some point next week, but not definitely happening uh, on a specific day. Another way of looking at that is the chance of taking a, a chance of the temperatures being four degrees below average. And you can see here strong signal, the darker colors here across Scotland, Northern England, representing 80, 90% chance that temperatures will be four degrees below average across much of the North. Whereas in the South, certainly by Thursday and Friday, that chance of temperatures being four degrees below average is, is very low indeed, only what, 10%. Uh, or less. So that strong signal that parts of the north will be coldest and stay coldest for longest as we go through next week. And if we reverse that and look at temperatures 
two degrees above average. Not a strong signal here, but as we head towards the end of next week, perhaps a bit more of a signal with a higher chance of temperatures, certainly across England, Wales and Northern Ireland being back up above average by the time we get to Thursday and Friday, but not a particularly strong signal. So what does all that mean for our weather next week? Well, it means it's likely to start pretty cold next week, particularly across the north. It will be turning milder from the southwest and with that milder air coming in from the Atlantic, it is likely to bring some cloud and outbreaks of rain as well. As always, for the day-to-day -day details, make sure you stay up to date. This is a 10-day trend, just looking at the flavor. So particularly if you've got plans for the bank holiday weekend in May, make sure you stay up to date with the forecasts as we go through next week. And the best way, the easiest way to do that is to hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Of course, make sure you're following us across social media.